what are we up to today? Headlight improvements on any 88 to, to roughly 99 GMC or Chevy Suburban or pickup truck for that matter from the General Motors Corporation. As most folks know who own these vehicles, when you put on your high beams, the low beams go out. You just have the high beams coming on. Well, that gives you an okay light further down the road, but it sort of gives you a dark gap um, around 50, 60 feet in front of the truck. So um, modifications that can be made that you see on a lot of forums and things like that are modifying it so that the low beams will stay on with the high beams. There's good ways and there's not so good ways of doing it. Just hacking in a couple of wires really won't cut it, no pun intended. So it's always good to use relays and circuit breakers to protect your circuits that you're doing and things. And then, and trying not to cut the wire harness totally, but rather just slip the, the insulation back just a little bit and wrap and then solder your, um, your added wires on from your relay onto the um, new setup that you have. Now you might see the HID ballast over here, that's because this vehicle was equipped with HIDs on the low beams and those are absolutely terrible for oncoming traffic I found and um, and when it was a little bit foggy outside just the glare the lights would be throwing would be terrible back in my eyes and um, it has to do with the lighting standards that we have uh, the European versus the uh, standards that we have over here the European standards have a very sharp cutoff Advantage to that is that you don't get too much glare or anything like that um, happening uh, I'm back in your eyes and in the eyes of pedestrians and oncoming drivers, but it won't light up the signs too well further down the road While our lighting standards do allow a certain amount of glare to um, Go up and out around perfectly fine with the type of bulbs that we use but the HID bulbs. It just doesn't cut it High beam though. It doesn't matter. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna be retrofitting these these HID lights, I'm just waiting for the proper 9005 slash, um, let's see what they call it, HB3 bulbs to come in so I can have these working on the um, high beams afterwards. Anyway, we'll get on with the project. We'll see how things progress from here. Wires, wires, lots of them to hook in. Basically, the red goes to a constant power source. The yellow is going to go back to the uh, low beam wire over here, which is the brown over here. And um, the green wire is going to go as a signal wire from the positive side of a high beam when they're kicked onto the green on the high beams. And of course, we'll have to have our ground over here as well. So, uh, which will be our blue. So, we'll get started with that. We'll see what will happen. Well, here are things as they stand right now, pretty much hooked up. When it gets warmer, we'll have to do a bit of tidying up. A couple of things didn't exactly pan out. I thought I would be able to find a ground over here for the um, negative side of the relay over here, but it looks like there's no ground available. But so I had to do a, a ground over here, which will work for now. It's out of the way of everything. And it is a ground, so there's no worries about getting any sort of, sort of short circuits. And always, always, whenever you're doing wiring on vehicles, always put relays in again this will be fastened in it's just got tape over right now to protect it but but uh, this excuse me circuit breaker i mean is actually protected yet down the line where it picks up power by another circuit breaker down there whenever you're doing wiring you can't be too safe with things because if you don't use um protection against short circuits a little project could end up being a disaster that'll cost you a whole vehicle and uh you know who wants to have that happen in their lives? So, always protect with circuit breakers or fuses. I like to use circuit breakers and headlight circuits because if you do have something that goes wrong, circuit breakers will flick off and on and off and on. At least you'll have enough lights to get to the side of the road safely. Although this is totally independent of the vehicle's own lighting system. So, let's get everything buttoned up and we'll start her up and we'll show you how it's worked out. But first, very quickly to summarize, 
Number 30 on the relay goes to a constant power source, that red wire back there. That's where you're picking up your wire power from. And then 87 on your relay is going to go down to your low beam wire, which is this over here. On a GM, that would be the tan colored wire. Now your signal for the on and off to the relay to have it power up that low beam when the high beams are on is going to come from your number 85 I believe it is excuse me it's gonna be your number 86 which is the um, green wire over here which will go to a corresponding green wire on your GM circuit I'll make a diagram after to make it a lot more self-explanatory and then of course your remaining 85 on your uh, standard type relay it's going to go down to your ground. Confusing yet, the diagram will show it all. Let's take a look and see how it actually works now. Now we'll see how well our project worked out. Quick start. Both work just fine. That hard starting problem, I'll show you in a second. It's coming from here. A connection's going green. A connection's getting bad. That's gonna have to be addressed very soon. It was a real hack job done to that, I'm afraid it looks like. But that's going to be addressed as soon as the weather warms up again. But anyway, success. Project worked out. See you later. The short and sweet of it for making the low beams stay on with the high beams on your CK trucks and Suburbans roughly 1988 to 1999. The actual relay here with the pin positions pointed out. 30 goes to a constant 12 volt fuse source like we saw under the hood of the truck. 87 on the relay. It goes to, a, it goes to be spliced into the brown low beam wire. 86 goes to a good ground. 85 gets spliced into the green high beam wire, which is the signal for the relay to switch on, which completes the circuit from 30 to 87, which of course goes to the low beam wire. That's how you're going to have your low beam bulb stay on with your high beam bulb. Hope this simplifies it a little bit other than looking at that basket of snakes that we saw there that has to be tidied up a little bit. And just a note, if you end up getting a 5 pin relay or a 5 blade relay, just ignore 87A. It's there, it's not going to do anything obviously. You're not going to be using it. You'll find these relays under the hoods of so many cars in the wrecking yards by now. And of course those circuit breakers as well too you can find. I have a 15 amp circuit breaker which is more than enough. So hopefully this helps out with the cause.